which you will hear your students using on the play field. It is also the language in which you will hear in the marketplace and on the corner shop. So we will say that our children have more exposure to Jamaican Creole than English language. It is most of the time it is in the school, in classrooms that they get exposure to Jamaican Creole. And so you're saying, now what does that have to do with reading? Because of our situation, and because of the lack of the input that is necessary to develop this language, we give primacy to reading as a language input. It is through reading that children will get input of English language on demand. So it is very important for us reading. It is very important for us to get our children reading at the earliest possible age so that they can have English language input on demand so that they can have access to what standard English is, all right? So in addition to all the universal benefits of reading for the Jamaican, we also have this other importance, this other significance, um, which is we need reading to help us to learn English language. And so with that said, in response to what's the big fuss about reading, to the Jamaican, English, um, reading is a big deal. And so um, teachers I and students in this pandemic, I know you are faced with challenges and I know that um, no more than ever you would have seen that how important reading is because you will have to you would have to be relying a lot on reading to navigate the, the, the virtual spaces and to actually learn to learn the information you need to learn on your own. It, you have been relying a lot on reading. And so teachers, I applaud your effort, the effort you have been putting in, in helping your students to stay connected, helping your students um, during this troubling time, this challenging time. And, and I, I encourage you that while you're here, you will have a good time. But um, most importantly, when you leave here, you will leave with the message that reading is a big deal to us Jamaicans and that you will take the torch of reading along with you and you will burn it, you will light it, and you will ensure that each of our students, that you put out the best effort you can to ensure that our children are reading at the earliest possible time. I encourage you to read aloud to your students. It's the single most important thing you can do. So if a day your internet is not working and you're having challenges as you go onto the internet, know that the most, to your virtual classrooms, know that the most important thing you can do is to conduct a read aloud or to record a read aloud and leave it for your children to engage in. It is that important. So if it's the only thing you do for the day, you would have done a lot for your student, not only for their um, emotional health or their mental health, but also for their educational benefits and for, as I said before, learning to develop competency in English language. So once again, I applaud the effort um, of Mr. Brand from the Region 6 Literacy Team in putting on this event. And I applaud the effort of all who have gathered here today to engage in this event and I hope you have a very wonderful time and please leave knowing that for the Jamaicans, we consider reading a big deal. Thank you.
All right, thank you very much. Um, wasn't unable to unmute a while ago. Um, so we will continue with the program. Hold on. All right, next on the program is Eltham Park Primary here. If you are, just kindly raise your hand. Use the raise hand feature so that we can unmute you. Yes, thank you. So Eltham Park Primary, a parent and a child read aloud will take place right now. Good morning, everyone. This morning, my mother and I will be reading a story entitled Tawa and Her Son Called Lightning, which was taken from a book co written by Dara Henry. Hello and the Sun Named Lightning by Zara Henry. Hello is the name of an old woman who lives in the middle of the Caribbean Sea with her brothers and sisters. Hello is very popular around the world, but most people know her by another more popular name, Jamaica. Hello is a very proud woman because she has produced a lot of children who have done great things all over the world. And these days, she is especially proud of her son, Lightning. When he was young, Lightning always wanted to play cricket, but his coach told him that he didn't have the skill to be a good cricketer. This made Lightning a little sad, but not for long, because he soon realized that he could run very, very far. Well, do you know who this son is about? No, I do not know. This son is about our famous runner, you see in both. But I have played a little on the words and the name to make it a little more interesting. All right? So we'll continue reading. In fact, Lightning's long legs soon became his main mode of transportation around his rural community. He was as tall as a cherry tree and as skinny as anyone could be without looking anorexic. People tried to tell him that his height and build would eventually slow him down, but Lightning refused to listen and continued practicing to run as fast as he could. Power's son practiced and trained hard every day and soon lightning was finishing top first in every school race he ran seeing lightning's talent the school coach told him about a big championship racing event for boys and girls in kingston and encouraged him to enter he agreed and began training for the big event when the day of the championship finally, uh, finally arrived, Lightning was more than ready. And in every race he ran at the championship, he always finished in first or second place. After that, people started to realize that Lightning could really run fast. Since he performed so well at the championship, his coach encouraged him to participate in other championships at home and abroad. Some of the championships involved some of Talawa's other children, as well as athletes from other countries. It was at one of these championships that Lightning drew the world's attention. At 15 years old, he won a gold medal in the 200 meters race, becoming the youngest person to ever achieve that feat. And just in case people thought it was a fluke, he set a world record in that same event one year later. The years flew past and Lightning started to think 
that the only time people ever remembered him was when he was running a race. He decided to change that. He told himself he would make sure the whole world always remembered his name. So he trained harder, got fitter, and soon he could run three times faster than usual. Whenever he wanted a little motivation, he remembered the gem his teacher taught him about the heights by great men reached and kept. And he remembered the words his mother told him, if you want good son, your nose have to run. Well, Lightning's nose didn't just run, it bled. <laughs> and he reached heights that many of Felawa's children only dreamed of reaching. He was chosen for the team that represented Talawa at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, China. Lightning didn't quite get to reach the peak of his excitement before it was nearly quenched. As soon as he and his teammates arrived for the Olympics, people from various organizations wanted to test their blood for what they called performance-enhancing drugs. Lightning knew he had nothing to hide, so he told them they could do as many tests as they wanted, as long as it didn't make him too weak to run. And after the tests were finished, all the officials found in his blood were yam, dashim, Irish potato, and cornmeal dumpling residue. <laughs> so they declared him clean and allowed him to race. When the starters gone fired to signal the beginning of the 100 meters race, Lightning must have thought it was a real gun because he took off as if somebody was chasing him. And although they tried their best, the other runners just could not catch him. After he dashed across the finish line and the scoreboard displayed the glorious 9.69, the whole stadium erupted. Lightning had set a new world record. The, uh, the only thing that the announcer could say was Lightning has struck at the Olympics. A few days later, at that same Olympics, Lightning easily won the 200 meters race and set another world record. No one could believe their eyes. The boy shone his golden colors and took home the gold. In fact, he took home three of them and broke three world record records in the process. Yes, my dear friend, three, because he and his three older brothers won the men's four by 100 meters relay in record time as well. Without delay, Lightning was declared the fastest man alive. One singer even said he's faster than Kiara and Pike. The next year, Lightning went to the World Athletics Championship in Berlin, Germany, and electrified the place, just like he did at the Olympics. Everybody was wondering if he could beat his rival, the legendary Dyson Hay, in the 100 meters race. Well, Lightning didn't just beat him, he destroyed him and broke his own 100 meters world record too. This time, he was clocked at 9.58 seconds. But Lightning didn't stop there. He won the 200 meters as well and set another world record. He clocked in at 19.19 seconds. After that, people started saying he should stop competing against people and start competing against cars and horses. Yes, friend, all who hadn't heard about Talawa's Lightning before, definitely knew about him after these events. Kalawa has other children who competed and won in the Olympics and the World Championship too. The total number of medals Kalawa's children brought home from the Olympics and the World Championship was 24. Kalawa is a small woman, but her children are larger than life. Don't ask me how she does it. Some may get it. Some may give it. That's the end of our story. Thank you very much. That was so exciting. And I know the persons watching, I know persons are just able to join on YouTube and we welcome you to our Read Across Jamaica Day celebration in Region 6. 
So all the students who are out, give yourselves a clap. All the teachers who have been working hard all morning to get the students out, thank you very much. We are so excited to have you there. And we thank you again for joining us today. Um, that was very exciting to hear that parent and that student reading. And I hope all the, the parents who are watching, all the students who are watching, you take the time out to read a book today together, not just send the child to go and sit down in the corner and read, but take up a book and read with your, your, your students, with your children at home. At this point in time, I, is Wayne Plummer in the meat? No, Miss, Miss Carol Plummer from the Jamaica Library Service. It is now your turn to give the greeting from the Jamaica Library Service. Miss Plummer, okay. Okay, hello, good morning. Representatives from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Region 6, teachers, parents, boys and girls. I bring you warm greetings and best wishes from the Jamaica Library Service. On this day, we celebrate Read Across Jamaica Day under the theme Transforming Lives Through Reading in a Digital Age. I am delighted to be a part of this celebration. What is reading? According to the World Book Encyclopedia, reading is the act of getting meaning from printed and or written words. Reading is fundamental to learning and one of the most critical skills in everyday life. Reading provides the key to all kinds of information. It enables us to learn how to build or fix things, enjoy stories, discover what other people believe, and develop ideas and beliefs. Reading plays an, an important role in, the mo in most people's daily life. That, such as reading road signs, recipes, labors on food and medicine buckles, and directions to operating machines. We read and fill out forms at banks, tax offices, and even applying for a job. There are different kinds of reading, such as reading for recreation and reading to do our school work. Today, for Read Across Jamaica Day, we today for Read Across Jamaica Day, we are reading stories. Thus, we are reading for entertainment and fun. Parents, the Prime Minister, members of Parliament, doctors, teachers librarians, persons from different backgrounds will be reading stories to our children. As an agent of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, the Jamaica Library Service supports and encourages reading through the programs and services offered to the public. These include Willika Botwitalova, Parents Reading with Babies and Toddlers, which encourages parents to read with their babies and toddlers so they can develop a love for reading at an early age. We have the national reading competition and registration is taking place right now and continue till February, till, sorry, continue till Friday, May 14th. I encourage you all to visit the Jamaica Library Service website and register today. We also offer assistance to homework. However, the pandemic 
However, since the pandemic, the Jamaica Library Service has been offering services and programs online, such as answering online reference queries. Children can visit the library and use the library's computer to access classes. Sorry about that. Um, children can visit the library and use the library's computer to access classes. If they have their devices, they can access Wi-Fi for online classes also. Teachers can also teach lessons online at the library. Our computer, internet, Wi-Fi access, and tablets for library use are all free of charge. We also have EBSCO Post database with eBooks. We also offer coding for girls and gaming consoles. The library has a YouTube channel where stories are recorded and posted. Our staff also has been reading stories to students online. The Jamaica Library Service is open and children and parents can borrow books free of cost. All you need to do is be a member. Membership is not only for children, but also for adults. Children receive one ticket while adults receive three tickets and they can use their tickets to borrow books for their children. I encourage parents and children to visit the library nearest to you and become a member today if you have not already done so. Come and borrow books and enjoy reading, not just for today, but always. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Plummer. And... <laughs> I am trying to get my screen up. Yes. All right. Okay. So I remember a child. I used to love going to the library. And I had a few favorite books, which I used to borrow the same book over and over and over because the story was so interesting to me. And I still have that tendency to read over the same books. So I'm going to share what my favorite book is to read right now. Um, it is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Don't be afraid of the size of the book. It is actually seven books in one. So don't be afraid of the size of the book. And as a child, one of my favorite authors was Enid Blyton. So as a child, when I was going to school, my bag was packed full of books. So every time I got a break, I would be reading, I would be going through. And my mother, God bless her, <clears throat> sorry, she ensured, <clears throat> sorry, Yes, she ensured that I had all the books that I wanted. And I was one of those weird children that would ask for books for presents instead of toys and stuff. I would ask for books, which I think my parents appreciated. So at this point in time, we will, I'll ask Linstead Primary, are you here? Is Linstead Primary here? If you are, just raise your hand for me. Yes, I will. That's Tiffany Grant. Unmute your mic. Tiffany, do you see something coming up asking you to unmute? Thank you. 
Is anyone else here from Lynn State Primary? If not, I'm going to ask if Kingston Bookshop is now here. Tiffany? All right, she muted back herself. Is Kingston Bookshop here? Right. Is Miss Davis from um sorry, Miss is Richards Mitchell from Davis Primary School. Are you here? The video is there enough for Lynn State Primary. Okay. Let me Let see me if, see if I, I am yes. my watch. You want me to go ahead and share my screen? Yes, please. Primary yes. Video? Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay, are we seeing the screen? Yes, yes I'm seeing it. Hello? Sorry, Miss German, could you turn up the video? We're not hearing clearly. Miss McIntosh is playing it. Oh, Miss McIntosh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, pause the video. Yes. yes. Um, I'm going to ask you to take it off and start it again at the correct volume now. Because we weren't hearing anything at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to resume. Okay. And the, the, the person who is marking on the screen, Marcos Louis, I'm going to ask you to stop. I'm trying to disconnect the annotation. Yes, thank you. So once again, we will welcome the Linstead Primary School as they share their item. No. In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord.
that was Linstead Primary and they did very good. I want you to give them a round of applause wherever you are. Give them a good round of applause. Yes. And I hope you are listening to what the story of the song was saying, because you know that songs can tell stories. Yes, man, songs can tell stories. So I want you to challenge yourself. When you are listening to a song, listen to the story that the song is telling you, because stories tell a song. I have a friend here who is very interested in what is going on this morning. This is my friend. And he has been watching all of what is going on. And I know you're very excited to see what the next item is, right? Because I hear that Wayne Plummer is supposed to be coming on to do a poem. And I'm really excited about this poem. Are you? Are you out there excited for Wayne Plummer's poem? If you are, just give me a, a, <clears throat> a clap hand feature or a thumbs up if you are ready to do so. All right, and my friend is very, very excited. He was very excited about what the, the Linstead children were doing and he's looking forward to the rest of the program, all right? So we will now have Wayne Plummer. Good morning, everyone. My name is Wayne Plummer and I'll be reading my story titled The Food That Saved me good morning everyone my name is Wayne Plummer and I'll be reading my story titled the food that saved me when I was seven years old I was a lover of junk food I used to eat a lot of candies and snacks whenever I got my dinner that was prepared by my mother I never ate much I would reserve myself to eat a snack. She used to prepare what she called a balanced diet, a little of everything from the different food groups. My only interest was in the fruits. My mother would always get upset when I don't eat what she prepared for me, but to be honest, I was not a lover of cooked food. So as time passes by, I would eat a small amount each day and more of snacks. I began feeling ill. I was having headaches and I felt as if I was going to faint. It. My mother noticed that I was not physically active like on a normal day. I would run, jump, skip and even play football after I returned from school. I was just laying down looking weary. I started craving for the food that she would normally prepare and interest in water than the juice that I would drink every day. I started vomiting so she brought me to the doctor for a checkup. When I went to the doctor, he said that I was dehydrated and I, have, and I had gastroenteritis. This, this was the, due to a lack of water. Of new, due to a lack of nutrients in my body and lack of water which affected me. The doctor showed me videos on YouTube how important is nutrients to the body and what effects it can have if I do not eat the right nutrients. He also told me about water saying, water is life without water my blood organs and bones will not be will be in trouble. My mother told him that I was not a lover of the foods that would give me all these nutrients and I do not like drinking water. He gave me a medicine and instructed that I should eat no sweets and drink more water. I am supposed to eat what my mother prepared a balanced diet. I was scared of the fact that I don't want to hurt myself so I ensure that I eat properly because the nutrients is important to my body. I started eating what she gave me and over a period of time I began to feel like it. it's so I ate more and more. I began to like vegetables because, because it 
provides vitamins. My mother gave me a balanced diet every day, a little of everything like chicken, fruits, vegetables, rice and peas. This is the meal that helped me to regain my strength so I can perform in my physical activities like how I was doing from before. I started watch you started to watch YouTube videos and learned that the body is a machine that needs fuel to generate power. The food that, the food I eat plays a vital role to keep my cells growing and developing so that my body can work properly. My mom was right all along. The food that she was offering me every night had the nutrients to maintain my body. Lastly, I became a huge fan of water. I was, a, I was not a person who would drink water, but I realized the more I drink juice, the more I'm getting thirsty. I move away from juices to drinking water because the water lubricates my joints and help it to move and function properly. After I recovered, I started to eat proper and shared with my friends that eating the right food will maintain your body and thank you to my mother who gave me those meals. The Food That Saved Me by Wayne Plummer So, Wayne told us about the food that saved him. And I hope everybody out there, those who are on the meet, those who are in YouTube, those who may see this later, will understand that, yes, you can't just eat the sweet things that you like. You can't just drink the juice that you want to drink. You have to have what is known as a balanced diet. Now, my friend here pointed out something to me. Do you know that we need to have a balanced diet in what we read as well? We can't just read comics. We can't just read news alone. We have to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that because your mind now needs to grow. It is not just about what you like because some of us, if give us, give us half a chance, we only read the comics and the funny stories. But what about the news? We need to read the news. And for those of us who only read the news, we also need to relax. We also need to stretch our imaginations by how, by what we read, by the books we pick up. So yes, read the newspaper, find out what is going on in Jamaica, around the world, find out what is going on also in your mind, what you can discover in your mind. All right. So don't just limit it, limit it to only the things you like. Discover a whole world by reading. Discover a new language by reading. So you can find out a lot of things by reading. Okay. And my friend got hungry listening to that story, the food that saved me. So I think my friend is going to go now and eat breakfast, even though this is late for him. So say bye-bye to him and we will continue. So is Kingston Bookshop on? If not, I'm going to ask if Tredega Park Primary and Infant is on. No. So I will go. Mr. Rule, are you in? Yes, I'm here. Yes. So we have our guest speaker, Mr. Elkana Rule. And I know teachers and some students may recognize this name and principals as well. Yes, my principal. Hi, Miss Clark. Yes. <laughs> um, principals may recognize this name. This is the author of um, The Man, Man from Jamaica Hills. And he will tell us about reading and its importance right after Tredega Park. I see that Tredega Park is here. So Miss Gilzine, I'm going to unmute you. If you raise your hand, I can't find you easy. Oh, I found you. All right. So Tredega Park, 
you are now on. Miss Gilzin, you are unmuted. Or Mr. Gilzin. Tredega Park, the person that said they were from Tredega Park. Oh, you need to share. Um, Mr. Brian, could you allow N. Gilzine to share their screen so that we can see what is from Tredega Park? Okay, please, no problem. All right. It's easier to just make them co-host so that they can share quickly. Mr. Brown? I have asked her to share her screen. I give her the... Okay, okay. Are you able to uh, to share? All right. So I may we may do that after Mr. Rule. So we will look at that after Mr. Rule. So I ask Mr. Rule now to just come forward and make his presentation. Thank you very much, Madam. I've been asked to make a present a brief presentation on reading. As we know, many volumes have been written on this subject, but I will just make some brief salient points. We all know the importance of reading and how important a subject it is. But I just want to reemphasize its importance to us all. Acquiring the skills of reading and writing are the most important achievements a person could make in life. Reading is of such necessity that many worthwhile thoughts have been expressed on this subject. Some of, some of these are as follows. Learning to read is about listening and understanding as well as understanding what is on the page. Reading exposes one to a wide range of words builds a good vocabulary and improves understanding. The more you read, the more you know. Reading helps to shape you, to shape your life into what you want to become. If you can read, you can learn anything about everything and everything about anything. Most Pleasant of all, reading is fun. We can never 
emphasize the necessity of learning to read. Because many people gain these skills at an early age, they take them for granted, not recognizing the great part that they play in taking them smoothly through life. Nowadays, many children become fluent readers at an early age, at the age of four to six. Many children are already able to read and some even earlier. In my childhood days, it would be quite an event to hear a six year, years old reading. In those days, it was much easier to get along without being able to read and write. It's not so nowadays. It's very difficult to get along in life if you're not able to read and write. So parents, teachers, and governments everywhere want a literate population. People who can read fluently and understand what they read. Reading is one thing, but understanding what you read is another. They have to learn to follow instructions on their own. For example, motor cars have become an absolute necessity of our time and everybody wants to drive. But the roads are becoming more complicated with more signs everywhere. And if you cannot read, then you will get into real trouble. The telephone, for example, is one of the most important electrical gadgets of our time. It gives you all types of instructions and you have to be able to read, to make use of this instrument in a proper manner. It is to the credit of our teachers who are constantly adopting new and more efficient strategies to get children to read that um, we have to give them credit. Many of these dedicated human beings have gone far beyond the call of duty to educate the population. In many of the rural areas, Many of these mortals make a great difference. Parents too should continue to play their part in developing the reading skills of their children and making reading material available to them. As soon as they develop an appetite for reading, then most of our problem is over. They will want to read and their own. Quite often, well, children are a set of people who are always asking for presents. And quite often, they do not ask for a book. But parents, teachers, and friends should know that this should be on the list of presents. Now, this is all I have for today. But I was asked, as well as you know, I write stories. And Nancy's stories um, take a, I take a great interest in preserving our cultural heritage. So I was asked as well to give a brief on Nancy's stories, not to read one of these books because they would probably exhaust, um, exhaust the time frame that I'm in. So I tell you how Anansi became king. In the days of long ago, there lived a king who had three beautiful daughters. The king was getting old and did not know who was to be king after him. So he said, anybody finds out the names of, oh no, 
king. Everybody finds out the names of my three daughters. Shall win the kingdom and become king when I die. Men came from far and near to guess the daughter's name. They guessed names like Peggy, Laura, Margaret, Pamela, but nobody guessed right. Then one Sunday, and Nancy jumped down on two of his feet and trotted off, trotted off to the wall. He caught a ship and sailed to the king's country. And Monday, he spent the whole day making a pretty basket and, and painted a pattern in green and red. And Tuesday, he, he collected all the lovely flowers that he could find around the place to put in the basket. He knew that the prince, all the three daughters, went to the beach early in the mornings on Wednesdays. As soon as they were out, he, he crept into the middle of the room, put his basket there, and then crept under the floor, call it the cellar, to listen. As soon as they were back, they were so excited to see this lovely basket that they started shouting out one another's name. And Nancy was interested in the youngest daughter. As soon as he heard the name, he, he started laughing and said, that's my choice. Then Nancy went into the town and hired a band. The band members, he asked them to follow, to accompany him to the palace playing their music as they went along. When they were near the palace, Anansi said, play your lotus, play your lotus. The king was getting old, older and older every day, and he was getting hard of hearing. He was sitting on the balcony over the doorway. When he heard the music, he strained his ears to hear what was happening. Then he heard his daughter's name being called out. The king was so frightened when he saw that it was Anansi that he fell from the balcony over the doorway and no one ever saw him again. Anansi climbed the stairs, sat on the throne and became king. That's it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Let me take back the spotlight. <laughs> yes. All right. So who enjoyed that story? Raise your hand. Good. I see the hands going up. And who is... Who wants to now go and read that story? I see hands up. I hope it's to read the story, you know. Suppose I ask you to read the story now. Will you be able to? And read it with expression. It's not just to call the words, but read it with expression. So somebody wants to hear the next thing you are going to say and how the story will end. So I thank Mr. Rule for that presentation. I enjoyed it, sir. So Ms. Gilzine, we will now ask for you to share from Tredega Park. Um, I don't know if you had shared the sound as well. So you may need to start over and start by sharing this from sharing the screen again. Yes.
Ms. Gilzin? Let me know if you're having some difficulties still. I have made her co-host. Yes, I see. If not, no, we're not hearing you, Miss Gilzine. For some reason, we're not hearing you. You are unmuted. Your mic is open, actually. So I'm not sure what is going on, why we're not hearing you, because the mic is open. All right, um, type to me directly, Miss Gilzin, and I'll see what, what can be done. So in our schools, we have different programs going on. At the school where I work, St. John's Primary, we have a Spanish teacher and she's from Cuba. And I'm going to ask, her name is Miss Anna. I'm going to ask Miss Anna to now give us a story in Spanish. Miss Anna, I have asked you to unmute. Yes. Yes. And if you could turn on your camera, Miss Anna, please. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have. Have... Uh, Spanish or English? English Spanish, Miss Anna. To talk about well, whichever you, you decide. You say the... No. Introduce the book. I have a book in my hand. All children in Cuba, but I don't know how you speak. Let me. The video. Yes, this book, all children in Kim have this book in grade two. This is grade two book, all the reading book for children. Uh, sorry, this Ms. Book. Anna, you're showing us because we're not seeing, your, your camera is not on. I think we have lost her. I think she's at school and the internet may be giving her problems. So we have lost Ms. Anna. Yeah, we have lost Miss Anna. I don't see her in the participants. Oh, she's here. All right, so let me let her connect. I'm not sure what's happening with Miss Anna right now. So I'm going to ask a few questions in the meanwhile. And if you are on YouTube, you can answer on YouTube as well by typing in the chat. And I'm going to ask the persons here on Zoom to also type in the chat. You're not going to unmute. If you get your answer, you're going to type it in the chat. Okay, Miss Anna is able to unmute now. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions based on our program today. So we had a presenter earlier on. Um, and she, she gave greetings from the Jamaica Library Service. Does anyone remember her name? If you remember her name, Miss German is watching um, YouTube for the answer and she will let me know. 
and I'm watching the chat here. So I'm going to ask Miss Anna now is up. So I'm going to ask her to now do her story. Miss? Yes, Miss Anna. Yes, the reading, the reading maze. In certain el mango, el azúcar y el agua se encontraron en la misma mesa. Sobre la utilidad de cada uno. El agua decía: Yo sé la y transparente, tan blanca como la espuma del mar y del vino largo. Soy en eso la cuchara que está. Yeah, we have we have lost Miss Anna again. I think the the internet is giving her a lot of issues. Uh, Miss McFarlane, you mean yeah. Sir? Yes, sir. I will share for Miss Gilzin. All right, sir. So go ahead, Mister Brian. And I'll watch for Miss Anna. I think the school internet is giving her up. Hi, everyone. My name is Abigail Armstrong, and I'm a fifth grader from Tradiga Park Primary and Infant School. When did I start reading? I started to read while in basic school. My parents made me attend reading class every day after regular class. I really liked to read. So every reading class, I was asked to read to the class. What were the challenges I faced? I remember when I started, Auntie Polly, my teacher, would ask me to read in front of the class. When I went up, I started to stutter. So my teacher told me to try again, and when I did, it went really well. My mom and I would like to read a story for you written by Jamaican authors. Enjoy. The story is entitled Sweet Sweet Mango Tree. Ben was a man who did not like to work. One day he was sitting under a tree. He heard a noise far away in the bush. It was like somebody singing, but it was not a song Ben knew. Ben wanted to see what was happening, so he walked quietly through the bush. Then Ben saw a funny thing. There was an old man in a red hat. He was singing and dancing around a big mango tree. As he danced, he sang, Sweet, sweet mango tree, mango tree sweet. My children need something to eat. Then to Ben's surprise, he heard a deep voice. What do you want to eat? It was the mango tree speaking. The old man in the red hat danced and sang, sweet, sweet mango tree, mango tree sweet. My children need rice and meat. Then the tree began to shake. It looked as if a big wind was blowing, but there was no wind. The mangoes on the tree went round and round. Suddenly, Ben heard a loud noise. He thought it was mangoes falling, but it was not. Bags of rice and meat fell out of the tree. The old man put the rice and meat into the basket. Then he danced around the tree again. As he danced, he sang, I thank you, dear mango tree, I thank you. Then the old man went away. Ben stood still. He thought about what he had seen. I am not hungry. He said to himself, but what a good way to get food. And I would not have to work for it. 
Ben ran to the tree and shouted, Mango tree, mango tree, I want something to eat. Nothing happened. So he danced around the tree, but still nothing happened. He had forgotten the words the old man said. So the next day, Ben stayed in the bush. He wanted to see if the old man would come again. The old man did come. He danced and sang. He asked for milk and bread. Just as before, the tree shook as if a big wind was blowing it. Milk and bread fell to the ground. This time, Ben was sure of the words. He said just what the old man had said. But he asked for a lot of things. He wanted meat, rice, milk, bread, and rum. All these things dropped out of the tree. He began to pick up some rice and suddenly everything went back up in the tree. What had happened? He forgot. He had forgotten to say thank you. So Ben danced around the tree and sang, I thank you dear mango tree, I thank you. All the things dropped out to the ground again. Ben could not eat all these things. So he went to town and sold some of them. It was like a good way to make money, and he did not have to work. Every day, the old man came to the tree and asked for a little food. And every day, Ben came to the tree and asked for a lot of food. And then he went to town and sold it. Ben was making a lot of money, but he wanted more. Let me see if the tree will give me other things, he said to himself. Maybe I could ask for clothes. No, I will ask for a lot of money. Then I can buy anything I want. I will live in a big house, even selling is hard work. This way, I will not have to work again. I will be rich. So the next day, he went to the mango tree. He took a lot of baskets to put the money in. He danced and sang. Sweet, sweet mango tree. Mango tree sweet. My children want money to eat. Maybe nothing will happen, he thought. Maybe the tree will know that people do not eat money. But the tree began to shake and shake. Money began to fall to the ground. And Ben began to fill the baskets. He did not even stop to say, thank you. But this time, the tree did not take back anything. More money just fell. Soon, Ben had filled up all the baskets. And still, more money fell and fell and fell. It fell on top of him. It covered him up. Then the tree stopped shaking. The old man came the next day. He saw a lot of green mangoes under the tree, but he did not think about it. He just got his food and went away. He did not know about Ben, so he did not look for him. And nobody ever saw Ben again. Thank you, and we hope you were inspired. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tredega Park. Thank you very much. Now, I used to read that story as a child, and I used to read it over and over again. So I'm going to give you a little assignment to do with that story. I'm going to ask you to go ahead, take out your, your, your books, get crayons, get um, pencils, um, and you can draw your favorite part of that story. If you're an older child, you can also do get actual leaves, paste them in your book, do all of that, make something out of the story. Just make something and share it with your teachers and you can talk about it. That's one way to know if you were listening to what was going on. So I want you to challenge yourselves to make something from this story. Write about your favorite part of that story. That's all you have to do today, things concerning books. 
So I'm going to ask that you really try to get into the books, try to get into what the story was saying. So for example, who was, who was the person who was not thankful in this story? This story tell you now about manners and manners take you far into the world. That's the Jamaican saying. So remember to have manners because it will take you far in the world. And I will have a question about this story. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, well, yes, Ben. Ben was the answer to that question. I see that answer. All right. And that's from Whitley, Whitley Ray. Yes. Miss Anna, I don't know if you're able to fully share now. <laughs> I'll ask you one last time and hopefully the internet will cooperate with you. Yes. What is that? Giovanni Ro, you, um, you're not going to read right now, but I'll give you a chance to do so. Something short, Miss Anna. Let's see if this will work again one last time. And my question now about the story. My question is this. What words did the old man say to the mango tree? You have to write it. What words did the old man say to the mango? I want all of it one time. <laughs> So I only say part of it from Atredo Brown. I only say a part of it. I want all of it. And Miss German is watching from on YouTube to see if we have answers on YouTube as well. All right, we are coming down nicely. Um, we have some songs from Ibomar. He is here, and I'll ask him to now do those songs for us. Let me see if, oh, I see somebody putting it in. Miss Jarman, could you contact Ibomar and ask him to join the audio, please? I see he hasn't joined the audio. So he needs to join the audio so he can do what he needs to do. It would be Mrs. Greenland and not Miss oh, Jarman. Mrs. Greenland. I keep mixing you up. I apologize. <laughs> I've spoken to Miss Jarman so often this week. All right. Sweet, sweet. Mango tree, mango tree. Sweet. I see that from Amelia. Mango. Mango is uh, the Spanish story. All right. Miss Anna, I hear you. Yes. Let me see if I can, yes, I can see you now. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Miss Anna. Yes, I read the, the story. En cierta ocasión, el mango, el azúcar y el agua se encontraron en la misma mesa. Se pusieron a conversar sobre la utilidad de cada uno. El agua decía... Yo soy tan fresca como la brisa del campo y tan limpia y transparente como el azul del cielo. Pues yo, dijo el azúcar, soy tan blanca como la espuma y tan dulce como la miel. Y yo, intervino el mango, soy tan sabroso que no hay quien no me quiera. En eso, la cuchara que estaba oyendo intervino. Basta ya de vanidades. Tu agua eres fresca, pero no dulce. Tu azúcar eres dulce, pero no calmas la sed. Y tu mango eres sabroso, pero no refrescas. Entonces los tres, los tres pensaron. Vamos a juntarnos todos como buenos amigos. Y vamos a hacer un refresco para calmar la sed. Así, unidos, nuestro trabajo tendrá mucho más valor. 
Okay, let me explain now. This is the story about these three. These three, you see? Do you see this? Yes, Miss Anna, I'm seeing it. Azúcar, agua, mango. Okay? Yes. If I ask the students or everyone who are in the meeting, you find one fruit from the, from the story. How, what fruit do you may I mention in the story? Let me see if anybody in the chat will know what fruit yes. Miss Anna mentioned in the story. Nobody mango. Sees. Somebody said mango, Miss Anna. Miss yes, Anna, is that good. right? Two persons Very said mango. Very good. Very good. What number? What number is in the I I read in the story? Can you mention one number? Someone said one. Yes, maybe uno and so and the other. How many you see here? How many products? How many products you see there in the picture? Nobody you see five? Count. Someone said five, but yes, Amelia no. said three. Three. And how do you say in Spanish? And somebody the... said tres. Mm -hmm. Tres. Yama Wally good. says tres. Yes, that's good. Tres. And if we join the guacha, the mango, and this and the and sugar, how can what can we make? What can you make with the, the water, the mango, and the sugar when you mix it together? Mm -hmm. Kalisha says juice. Juice, but uh, what else? To refresh there. you by yourself. Can anything else refresco be made? Refresco in Spanish. <laughs> refresco. Okay. And... Uh, all together, all together can do better. All the work, when, when you join three or more persons, you can do better. Is the message of this story. The collective work. Okay. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Miss Anna, for joining and sharing with us. Yes. Well. All right, so now we will have, I hope Ibamar is ready. Still contacting him, Miss Bakari. Oh. Okay. So let me ask a question again in the meantime. Now, a gentleman spoke earlier. He gave greetings. He gave the welcome. Does anyone know his name? The gentleman which gave the welcome earlier. Does anybody know his name? And also, name one of the schools that, and the schools that did this, they, you're not allowed to answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> one of the schools that participated in devotion. And I'm watching the chat. Linstead School did the devotion. No, I don't have that as, as, what, as what we did for devotion. All right, I mentioned earlier, this is a next question. I mentioned earlier that our presenter, Mr. Elkana Rule, he wrote a very popular book in Jamaica. Kalisha Adams, I love you. You said St. John's Primary, that is my school. <laughs> yes, um, St. John's did participate in the devotion. Um, so I want to know which popular book in Jamaica Mr. Rule wrote. There is a book 
had a lot of print. Well, there are there are one of name one of the books. He read the Anansi book, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. And I like how a trader is participating. And I also see Kalisha participating a lot in the chat. Whitley Ray, she's answering in Spanish to Miss Anna. I am impressed. Teachers, hats off to you. These students, they are participating. Kayla Lee Mary, and I also saw Semaya Wallace and Amelia Saunders. Saunders, those persons are participating actively. Shakira Mason, Adriana, those children are participating actively in the chat and I want to big them up. I don't know what is going on on YouTube, but the persons who are participating on YouTube, I want to big you up too. So I'm going to give Giovanni a chance. Giovanni has been asking me from morning. Let me find you in the in the here. To allow her, I think it's a girl, to read something. So I'm going to give you the chance to now read something. So I've asked you to unmute. So when you see that option come up, you click on it and you will read what you have for us. Giovanni Aro. And I will only take this one person because we are supposed to end at 11 and I'm seeing the time. So Giovanni, or Giovanni I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Yes, it is called Gaviana Rose. Gaviana, sorry, darling. Yes, you are now able to read. Thank you. You're welcome. I like to read the story called Tambolina. Once upon a time, there was a woman who had no time. What the woman really wanted was a little girl. One day, an old woman came to see her. Plant this, the old woman said, plant this seed, said the old woman. Soon you, soon you will have a girl. So the woman planted the seed. And very soon there was a flower when the flower opened out a little girl. The woman looked the, the little girl into her home. You are as little as my Tom, Tom said the woman. So I'll so call you Tombolina. The woman looked after Tombolina and Tombolina was happy. One day, a tool saw Tombolina playing. What a pretty little girl, said the rude. I shall take her home with, my, with me said, we'll marry my son. So the toad hopped, hopped up to Tambalina and looked her away to the pond. She left Tambalina and Lily, Lily Lee and went to look for her son. But Tambalina was very happy. She didn't want to marry a toad. What she wanted to be back home with her mother. Just then a butterfly flew by. Please help me, said Tombolina. The toad wants to marry me, her son, but I don't want to marry him, I want to go home. The butterfly flew down to the lily leaf. Tombolina jumped onto the butterfly's back and they flew to a wood. 
Tombalina was very happy. In the wood, she sat, sat, sat there all summer, but then winter come, all the butterflies flew away. Tombalina was all alone. A mouse come by. Please help me, said Tombalina. I'm cold and I don't I don't have a home. The mouse said, Come and live with me. The winter was very long and very cold. Soon soon there will be no more food for you, said the mouse. The whole mole was food. He is coming to see us today. Why don't you marry him? But Tombalina wasn't very happy. She didn't want to marry the whole mole and she don't want to live down in a dark tunnel. When the whole when the mole come, he said, come and see my little home in the tunnel. You will be happy there. So Tombalina went to see the whole mole home. In the whole mole turn, Tombalina was a sure who was Hurt. All of my friends flew away when winter come, said the so solo. I'm all alone. Tumbalina looked after the swallow. He all winter. When summer comes, the the solo B was better and he flew away to be with his friend. Once more, Tumbalina was left alone. Soon it will be winter again. I will have to marry the old mole and live down in his dark tunnel. Just then, Tumbalina's solo fell down, flew down to her. Come with me, said. He said, I will take you to the land of summer. So Tumbalina jumped onto the solo, solo's back and they flew away. The land of summer was filled of flowers. In each of the flowers lived a little boy or girl, just like Tambolina. Come and live with us, say, they said. They looked they took Tumbalina to see their prince. Will you marry me? The prince said, will you marry me, Tumbalina? And Tumbalina said, yes. So Tumbalina and the prince live happily ever after. The end. All right. I am so happy that you volunteered to read because you did it so well. And mommy, or who was in the background, big up yourself because I heard you helping. Continue to encourage her to read because she does that so well. All right. And she was so excited and so happy to come on to read. I don't know how many children would volunteer to read like that in front of everybody and see even though she struggled with some of the words she wanted to share with us so don't be embarrassed if you don't know some of the words when you are reading you don't know it all that's why you are in school to learn all right so if you don't know something 
ask someone to help you go and ask don't be afraid to ask because even myself i don't know everything mr brian doesn't know everything miss greenland doesn't know everything and sometimes we ourselves as teachers we also have to ask for help so you little ones students don't be afraid to ask for help. If you know you don't know something, let someone know and see if they can assist you with um, what you don't know. So I enjoyed that story, Tumbelina. It was one of my favorite stories as a child. And yes, I had a lot of favorite stories because I read a lot of books. So I had a lot of those things that I enjoyed doing. So I heard in the story and I know in the story that there are some animals. And what am I going to ask you to do with the animals? Again, either you can draw. And I know I have some students, we have some students at St. John's that can do animation. And I'm going to ask those students to try and do something, try and put this story now. Use, use up your technology. Use, use the devices that you have. You have been using them for a little over a year or so. Yes, try to create a story with the um with the devices, Mister Brian. No, I'm not host as yet. Um, so you can make me host. One second, please. I'm sorry. I'm still co-host. So, Tori, I'm going to ask that you hold on a little because we're actually at 11 o'clock and we're trying to get, I will make you do something though. We're trying to get our guest artist to come in now. He's in, but we're trying to get him able to share his screen and so forth. So Mr. Abamar is here. He has been here for a little while. And he is actually ready to do what we asked him to do. Right, let me put you on spotlight, sir. There you go. No, we're not hearing you. <laughs> For some reason, we're not hearing you. I see that your mic is on and everything is on, but I'm not hearing you. The headset is plugged in. Sometimes I know the headsets give problems when they are plugged in to, for us to hear on this side. We're still not hearing. Okay. Yes, we are hearing you now. Yeah. We're hearing you now, good. Check. Audio, good? Yes, good. We can hear you now. Check. Hello? You're hearing us? Yeah, yeah. Hear yes, us? we are hearing you now. So you can go ahead. All right, cool. On my sound. Check. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. You are good to go. All right, good. Nice. <laughs> All right, bless your love. Yeah, no, it's all right now. Good. Yeah, yeah. I give thanks more life and blessing. This is Ibermar from afar. It's a pleasure. Um it's read across JA. And anything in regards to the youth them, you know, it's child's month, you know, it's the people's them month. So it's a youth them month. So we give thanks for the time and the energy. And this is Ibermar again, really. See? Ready? <laughs> Trench down. Yes, really, God, yeah, 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 yeah,
Listening to what he was saying, or just bobbing to the beat. Uh, looks like I was just bobbing to the beat, but no, I was actually listening to what was being said. Yeah. As said. So a million yeah. words, yes, little a million, a million thoughts, yes, a million words with a million thoughts every time. Yes, you know? man. All right. So, so thanks again. Ho- Go ahead. <laughs> I know. I just, I just want to say thanks again, um, for the opportunity. You know, for, you know, it's always a pleasure for me for really and truly like connect with youths. You know on any kind of level, you know, whether it won't be, you know, music or, you know, just simple camaraderie. Um, I always appreciate that. So thanks. Thank you, sir. And how can we get to those million words and million thoughts by reading? <laughs> by yeah, reading, true. yes. Yeah, yes, so, naturally. Well, well, we need to well, open to me, our I'm, minds and take in some of the books. Naturally. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to be a pressure to people, you know. Um, and you know, sometimes them, you know, them philosophies and them opinions. But I feel like most of the things that I want to understand, like simpler, is real and truly, like by reading and you know, observing too, you know. And, and a part of observing is a part of reading too, you know. You know, whether I want to be, you know, literature, you know, whether I want to be through some kind of, you know, documentary or. You know, regardless, even the newspaper, you know, simple tabloids, you know, on a daily basis, them things that help you, you know, for yeah. increase your knowledge on, you know, all different kind of levels. So, yeah. It used to be said that um, the best way to hide something from a black man is to put it in a book because them say black people don't read. But I think we can break that by encouraging our young people to read, by encouraging our students to continue reading. So I want to thank you for giving us those thoughts, giving us that um, song. And I see that you're a past student from the time and patience primary. So it is that time of morning when we say bye-bye. But before we go, um, let me first apologize for Mr. Brian. He was to do the vote of thanks, but he has a next meeting which started at 11. So he had to run out. So I will do the vote of thanks on his behalf. 
I would like to first thank um, Mr. Brian himself for allowing the student, the school-based literacy coordinators, this space from region six, this space to um, see this vision to what we wanted it to be to this part of the day. And we were able to fulfill what we wanted to do. So in his absence, Mr. Brian, thank you very much. Um, I would also like to thank the school-based literacy coordinators for coming together, working together across the, the region and putting this work together. And to all the teachers out there, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know a lot of us are upset this morning because of what is in the cleaner, but I won't get into that. Um, but we are still here. We are still trying to do what we have to do. Um, Oh, I see that apology and uh, our prayers are with Miss Heath Hills. Um, she was to give a, a greeting earlier, but she, she's here now. And we will apologize for her um, because she had some personal issues dealing with. So I will continue with the vote of thanks. I would like to thank Cedar Valley Primary and Infant School, Time and Patience Primary School and St. John's Primary School for helping out with the devotion. Um, our head boy got in a little late. He was still willing to do the prayer. So I'll ask him to pray at the end if he's still here. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Cecile Young from the ministry, Zara Henry from Eltham Primary School, Miss Carol Plummer from the Jamaica Library Service, Wayne Plummer from Chris Crescent Primary School, the students from the Linstead Primary School, the parent and the student from Tredega Park and Infant Primary School. Mr. Rule, you have left a mark um, across several generations and you have been immortalized by writing a book or several books, sorry, sir. And we, the teachers of Jamaica, the teachers of region six, the children and students of region six, thank you for your contribution to nation building and uh, to reading in our country. Um, Miss Anna, thank you for being here. Um, and I want to also thank Gavania, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Ro, and all the children that participated in today's activities here online and also on YouTube. I'll also thank you for doing the, the work for the rest of the day. This is still Read Across Jamaica Day when we end here. And I thank you and your parents, your principals, everyone who is engaged in ensuring that you, the children of Region 6, continue to grow and be strong. So thank you again. And this is Renice McFarlane from St. John's Primary School. And Shamari, are you here? Let me see if Ms. West Francis is still here. Yes. So. Go ahead, Shamari. Shamari is going to close in prayer for us and then we will leave. Go ahead, Shamari. Eternal God and everlasting Father, we would like Eternal God and everlasting Father, we would like for you to bless today. Go ahead, Nashamari. Go ahead, Shamar. We're hearing you, darling. We thank you. Eternal God and everlasting Father, we thank you for this precious day that you have made for us. 
We honor your mighty name. We would like you to bless each and every one of us that is gathered here today. Father, we ask for your mighty blessings upon this day. And we would like you to inspire your children all across Jamaica. Mighty God, inspire us to overcome all adversities with passion and resilience. Your mighty name, we would like to say thank you. Amen. Amen. And as we close, I'm going to ask that we all stand. Yes. As we play the national anthem, and we always stand for the national anthem. So please stand, stand at attention, and we will close by the playing of the national anthem. <laughs> Continue to have a wonderful child's month and have a good read across Jamaica day for the rest of the day. Bye-bye.